Hi, everybody. I'm here today with my friend Jeffrey Sykes and our dear friend Carmeet Zori, who lives in Brooklyn. And she is one of our treasured Bach Dancing and Dynamite Society artists who comes almost every summer. And uh, she's a violinist, as I said. And well, she's been holed up at home in Brooklyn with her family, and in, which includes her daughter, Amalia, who's a splendid pianist. In fact, she was a, gonna be a Dynamite Factory artist uh, last summer, but she, of course, she got a fantastic offer from Kanizel Hall, so off she went and we lost her. But we're gonna get her back today in a short performance with her mom, and welcome, Carmeet. Great to see you. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you, Jeffrey. Great to see you. Tell us about your last couple of months in Brooklyn. How's it been and how have you been? What have you been doing? Uh, first of all, it's I think more than even two months and it feels like maybe two days. So it's a strange thing that, I mean, to me it feels like the days go by really fast, which is an odd thing because I'm not performing and I'm home most of the time. Uh, getting myself out just like all of the world to just get the most important things and run back into my cave. So how's it been? I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love home, but I think we, uh, especially what we do, I guess that we do so much traveling and performing and socializing with other musicians, our essence of playing chain music is by talking to each other with music next to each other. So uh, this is a real discipline of opposition, you know, opposite thing, you know, and I find it, uh, it's too bad because I love when I do all the concerts and travel, home is an amazing, amazing place and it's still amazing and it saves me from trouble, I guess, but now, uh, I wish there was a better balance. <laughs> yeah. So, you do what you have to do. Have you had any, um, like, sort of surprising, nice uh, events that happened around the house, like a flower that bloomed where you didn't expect it, or well, something yeah, actually, uh, bad, or... This summer, because I'm surprisingly, totally surprised by that, uh, not going anywhere. Uh, I have a small garden, the garden of a town, of, of New York City garden kind of thing. It's not huge, but I am growing vegetables and kind of, it's, a, it's exciting. The yellow flowers are out, I'm smelling that. There are flowers for the peppers that I'm growing because I love peppers, you know, mini peppers. Uh, the eggplant, you know, being from the Middle East, you know, we all love to make baba ganoush, so my eggplants are growing. There's only, at this point, flowers, you know, it's early, but it's exciting, and uh, it's, it's, it's magic, all its own, nature is beautiful. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, that's great that you have that, that you can yeah. go outside and, and enjoy your garden a little bit. That's yeah, great. yeah. It's especially nice, you know, in a time like this when, you know, so much of the outside world is closed off to us, effectively. You've got your own little refuge you can go to, and you don't have to worry about anything. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. I, I, I know. It's a, it's a blessing. Yeah. So um, what, uh, what music have you been turning to during this time? What have you been playing? What have you been listening to what have you been studying um and, and and what about books and uh and movies and things like that what have you what have you been uh, occupied so as far as uh, i've been practicing because it's my nourishment it's it's been a thing that i make it a routine every day and uh unsurprisingly bach bach is my my savior, you know, and so we have six amazing sonatas, the partitas and the sonatas, and I spend a lot of time with them because it's a so they are solo, they're written for violin only. They are always a challenge every time I teach them or play them, they are a challenge, but they are the most soulful 
spirited things I can ever turn to and all the emotions pent up and all the fears they're just kind of um they are they are all Bach is there talking to me <laughs> I spend time with Bach and I'm a little bit better balanced when I put the violin down afterwards and I think it's for a lot of us uh, this way probably and uh so this is with the music I mean I'm practicing some challenging other things like a concerto now that I never ever learned before. Uh, I'm I'm spending some time on, on Prokofiev, Prokofiev one and Strauss concerto. Oh. Yeah, not that I'll ever perform it, but it's like some it's different. It's not the things I've done and performed. It's it's good. It's good for the brain and for the hands and and I'm of course uh, here and there see some movies. Uh, so the other day an old English movie is about running. PBS put, uh, I think it was PBS, but it was a black and white, The Lonely Run, it's called. And it was about a person who comes in unprivileged privileged home and ends up going to a disciplinary kind of school and philosophical stuff. It was very interesting, you know, and it takes you away from necessarily what's happening. And of course, uh, and I'm reading, uh, I have this much, I was talking to a friend of mine, I have this huge amount of books that I am going to read through Corona, as I call it. <laughs> so right now, uh, my mother was influencing me because she was, uh, reading the name of the rose and it's for her it's like the third time she's reading it and she said Carmi did you read it and I said actually I never really read that book and she said before anything go read history go and read Barbara Tuchman Distant Mirror so that's the book now that I'm reading I'm reading Distant Mirror because mom said so and mom knows best <laughs> you know. mom does know best my mother <laughs> Be great recommendations over the years, really good ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know so, what you were saying, about Bach. I, I I completely sympathize with what you say about Bach, and and something that has really struck me during this time is Bach was a composer who lived a very full life. I mean, he saw everything in his life. I mean, he saw war, he saw famine, he saw contagion, epidemic. He saw, I mean, he had all these children, many of whom died. He, he, he saw everything and, and that lived experience. You hear that in his music. You feel not just the, you, you feel both the everyday and the exalted in, in his music. And, and it's, I, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. Whenever I, I play Bach, I feel like I have gone through some cleansing ritual of some kind. You know, yeah. healing cleansing ritual. And, uh, you know, we're really fortunate that we've got this great music that we can turn to. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of the Oracle at Delphi. You know, when the, 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 the Oracle or the person who delivered the, the information from the Oracle went into this cave, right? And then these, these vapors came up and then the person would sit over the vapors and then that person would tell you the future or, or explain things to you or whatever it was, you know. And playing Bach over these months has been very much like that oracle where you, you go into this thing and the vapors come up, you know, and you just experience that and you feel better. You know, you know more, you have yeah. more faith, you have more strength from, from doing that in, in the same way that an oracle work so maybe Bach is the oracle for musicians <laughs> I don't know well you know I mean it's it's kind of uh I always am surprised by chord progression even though I know I know these pieces I've played them all my life and I'm listening to those chord progression I'm thinking how imaginative my god okay this there is not a second to it you know and I love others very much but it's just, so it's never boring and it's okay to return to the same thing. It's, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, these pieces are, are greater than our ability to play. You know, that's just really right. the truth. They yeah. are, there's more there than we will ever be able to express. 
And yeah. that's what makes it uh, worth returning to all the time. Yeah, I would, it was listening to motets. I was doing a jigsaw puzzle <laughs> by myself, a thousand piece. No one was helping me because they were like neck hurts, you know, because it's hard to do those things. And I'm sitting and listening to Bach motets, you know. It was great. Not even playing, just listening, you know. It's, it's really a great, great uh, mind. You know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um tell us a little bit about what you are playing for us so it's uh the Bach C minor sonata for violin and pianoforte you know it was before it was for for, for piano you know and uh I played that before with harpsichord actually uh, in uh years ago at the Santa Fe festival and I mean, you have all those sonatas. We have uh, six sonatas, uh, if I'm correct about those. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And um, I played them in the past uh, couple of years also with a harpist, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah, with Sivan uh, again. And because uh, he doesn't want to give up the sonatas, he wants to play them too. You know, was, so I did. Uh, and, and they're very beautiful. Uh, it's funny, I was playing this, I'm playing uh, this sonata, the first movement, the Largo, with my daughter. And she goes, is that like the St. John, the St. Matthew Passion? It sounded, so that Largo is so close to sounding like the St. Matthew Passion, where the one, I can't pronounce the German for it, but it's with the singer. The Bamadi. Yes. Yeah. The Met big Met aria from the Matthew Passion. It's That's it's awesome. kind of uncanny how close it's not, it's, but the same, but it's similar. It's so heartful, and Amalia was loving it. You know, just loving it, and of course, you know, seeing seeing Amalia loving it. You know, she she looked at it alone, and then let's play together. And ah, oh, it was such pleasure for me to share this. It's so, so much pleasure. I love it. That must be really wonderful to, you know, to be able to play music with a family member like that. I mean, how, how beautiful and wonderful that must be. That's, I mean, my brother is a percussionist and uh -huh. we have played a very, very, very few things together, but it's not been quite like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have the ability to play that kind of repertoire. So that's the only reason. It's just not available to you in that way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but but so now she wants to learn the whole sonata. <laughs> oh, great! Which great. is fine because it's really gorgeous, you know. I love I love those six sonatas. I mean, I think they're spectacular. In fact, one of the very first pieces of chamber music that I ever played was the second of those sonatas, the A major, mm -hmm. which I find so incredibly beautiful. It just just very touching and has that wonderful. Um, slow canonic slow movement that's like you know, one of the great things about Bach is that it has this formal rigor I mean it's really quite rigorous formally and yet at the same time it's in, so deeply expressive yeah. and that that canon is like <gasps> you know just kills you it's so beautiful yeah you know the the with Bach those sarabans that are in the violin, oh. in the solo violin sonatas, and not just the violin sonatas, but the sarabans in particularly, are gripping and they're full of grief, you know? And somehow we all need sometimes, if we don't want to say any words, we just do those alone. Uh, it's most, uh, it's, it's an intimate, surrounding yourself, surrendering yourself to something very, that you can feel, you know, it's, it's beautiful, you know. Yeah, so. one of our other artists who's playing one of these um, on, our, on this series, yes. uh, friend Adrian, the bassoon player, he said exactly the same thing. He played a Sarah okay. and I played a Sarah Bond also because they're just, they just say it all, don't they? Yeah. And you know, it's funny, you know, when I teach you, I mean, Sarabant is actually a South American dance, <laughs> you know, 
I mean, I read that when I was teaching. I had to read and understand what I'm looking at. But, you know, it evolved enough. And, and Bach, uh, you know, you have to feel the, the lilt with it, but it's still, oh, they usually are melancholic. They have this sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, we are going to really look forward to hearing that in a moment after our interview. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping to see you really soon, Carmi, because we're going to go on a big bike ride together here in New York. Very exciting. Yes. Yeah. And Jeff, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Uh, not even, or let, at least have a lunch on your boat. But um, I, Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. So, well, I'm really looking forward to the day when we can be back together and uh, hang out, exchange books, talk all, all our stories, play music together, and just be together. And it'll be, you know, it won't be, hopefully it won't be too terribly long before that can happen. And I really look forward to that day. But when it does, we're going to be so happy. Yes. We're going to be like, ah! I know. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. I look forward to it too. Amen. <laughs> Let it happen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Carmeet. And um, nice talking to you guys. Nice talking to you. Bye. 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 Bye.